Hey guys, and welcome to another Factorio Friday Facts discussion. I am here with Geplin and a cry and shame again. Hello. Hello. And this one is something that doesn't need, as Geplin said, doesn't need a lot of opinions because it's pretty straightforward, it's good, but it is uh, one that I, I think at least I will enjoy talking about just because it's really good news. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's been kind of a constant issue that they're finally, like they're putting their heads against. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Bell Optimizations for 15. Uh, they have mentioned, like, they mentioned quite a while ago in a Friday fact that they were doing Bell Optimizations and kind of how they were doing them, but they actually show some good examples in this one. Uh, and it's good to know that they actually have implemented the the optimizations because from reading this, it looks like it will make a pretty huge difference. Yeah, because yeah. they're removing a large portion of the collision calculations for the belts. Yeah, more or less all the collision calculations, really. And most of the item calculations and just... Uh, it seems like they've just been able to get it down to calculating a few integers every tick. Yeah, so kind of for anyone who doesn't know, I mean, this, what what you know, you can go read the Friday facts if you want the all the details. But essentially, like how it is now, if you want to save UPS uh, or performance in game, you use as many undergrounds as possible because um, it says right here this happens due to cache coherency and other issues but uh, essentially gave them an idea to treat normal belts like underground belts. And what that means um, is currently we move every item on every belt that can move. So if you have 20,000 items on belts in your Giga factory, each of those items will consume CPU to advance in its position forward. Um, but they're changing it so that it like merges, like creates sections of belt. Um, and will only calculate like a section instead of every single item in that section. I think. Um, I yeah. don't know if you, you guys probably have a better way to say it. <laughs> well, if you think about it, like they're trying to make each belt section act like an underground belt. Mm -hmm. So if you think about how an underground belt has to work, it just takes every single item that enters the underground belt, waits a specific interval of time, and then spits those items back out in the same order in the same relative position. Right. So it doesn't have to actually calculate the movement between there. It's just the movement between these two points is going to take, you know, 120 ticks. So 120 ticks later, they pop out the other end and you're done. Right. And that's kind of how they're making normal belts with their sections. Um, and they, so, I mean, they show kind of some examples here of how this will work, but kind of just an overview is that until something changes, so until like an inserter grabs it or it goes through a splitter or uh, the belt like stops or compresses as you're, as you're seeing in the, what is this? The second GIF here, then second and third. yeah. Yeah. And until that point, then it kind of just calculates everything as one rather than every single item on every single tile of belt, like it does now. So, yeah, that's really nice because I mean, that should make a huge difference. That's, that's about it. That's yeah, I mean, that's what I was getting out of it. They're basically um, treating everything as blocks of items instead of individual items, or more like just storing it as an array of items that they then move. It also means that, as it's stated here, like later down the line, one of the things that I noticed was that. Uh, whenever a belt, whenever a belt compresses, it will stay that way forever. Stay oh, forever, yeah. forever right there. Yeah. So this way, when it goes around corners and stuff like that, don't matter. It'll be compressed. Yep. Oh, yeah, and for people is. wondering, because I, I was checking on the comments to see who was wondering this, when it changes from one speed belt to another, that counts as a different belt section, so it has to redo its calculations and figure out the distances again. So that doesn't mean if you compress something on a yellow belt, it's going to stay compressed on a blue belt. Right, exactly. Which, I mean, obviously would make sense <laughs> to have yeah. <laughs> yellow belt compression automatically compress a blue belt since they're entirely different speeds. 
Um, but so I, I gathered from this that even curves will still be part of a segment that it won't break the segment. Yeah, because that's what like, if you look up top, the first one shows that segment six and segment seven are curves, but they're part of a segment, so it would be the same. Yeah, according to this, the only thing that's going to break a segment is going to be a splitter. Or the end of the belt. Yes. Right. And I think it do it has to do some other calculations, too, like when an inserter grabs or something. Um, maybe. Yeah, I assume, I assume when a piece is removed from the array that it had to recalculate distance between items. Yeah. I mean, at least the, it would have to calculate anything between those two mm -hmm. so i don't know if this is how they're doing it but if it if a inserter removed an item it wouldn't need to recalculate the entire thing it would have to look at the item before that item and the item after that item and yeah. then recalculate that particular distance which would be simple it's just distance a plus distance b equals new distance yeah yeah. And also, they don't, I mean, I'm not sure how they're doing collision detection exactly right now on belts, but this seems a lot simpler with the blue lines in the in the two GIFs here, that it's it doesn't have to tell when the items hit, it just has to tell when the distance between them becomes zero, which is just going to calculate sequentially as it uh, hits the end of the belt. So it's which only is... really messing with one number at a time instead of having to detect collision for every single item. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On top of that, usually collision detection is a very finite variable, like a very small, like one point something, where this calculation could be in a whole number. And I don't know, for those of you who don't know about uh, calculations with computers, that makes a huge difference for a CPU needs. Right, definitely. So kind of like seeing the results of that is, is they say down here in like the second or third to last paragraph for this part that um though it's not everything regarding belts so actual gains are expected to be around five to ten times um performance gain uh curved and straight belts are all merged together already the next step will be embedding underground belts as part of a single very long line so then they give kind of a even more of a specific example that so far, factories performing at 25 UPS start growing to 35 or 40 UPS just because of the belt optimization and belts are not everything these uh, factories contain. Yeah, so, so just just this one optimization is taking mega factories from unplayable to playable. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're gaining a minimum, it looks like, of about 10 UPS in these mega factories just with this optimization. And this is not to mention that if you remember several Friday facts ago, our seating said that he found like huge optimizations just in the general code itself, like not the belt stuff that managed to gain like another 15 or 20 UPS in maps he tested just from like cleaning up the code. Um, yeah. So between yeah, you're going to be able to run your, your SpaceX pace full speed after this. <laughs> oh, easy. Yeah, we can run SpaceX full speed. And I mean, you know, I think, you know, plus I, th I think I read they were doing inserter optimizations, although they don't mention them here. I mean, obviously this is belts, but you would think they would have maybe mentioned it briefly. Um, yeah, perhaps. It, it just seems like I think we can make the assumption for 15 that if it is in the game, they're trying to optimize it. Yeah, pretty much. And I've heard um, rumors that they are moving like train pathfinding to a separate thread on so for for processing which is pretty big because train pathfinding is actually one of the highest performance things um i believe i don't know if they said that in a friday facts or if our seating said that um blame the loops unofficially yeah so <laughs> so train pathfinding is actually pretty high in terms of like how how performance heavy it is and i think they're moving that to a different thread on your processor which should help yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. The trains are fairly complicated, and they have to change direction on the fly. And all kinds of weird junk with trains. Yeah. Just use belts now. Belts are faster. <laughs> belts <laughs> Just are belt faster. across the whole map. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey, when I did my achievement run, that's what I did. I just have belts everywhere. I didn't have time to build trains. Yeah. 
Um, now, an interesting point is someone mentioned in the forum comments, um, they asked, and I didn't see an answer to it yet, um, they asked if with these changes, if bots will still be better for performance and belts. And that's a good question. I'm kind of thinking yeah. not. They may be about even, or maybe belts will even be better. Um, yeah. Because bots don't have to do collision checks, but they have to do, um, like, still, they have to do pathing, right, to their destination, and that can actually get pretty heavy when you have a ton of bots going. They also have to do calculations for power. When they run out of power, they then change their path. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's probably, there's probably a crossover point when you get more robots than a certain amount, it's going to be better to use belts. Right. That, that would make sense. But, but I'm overall... Sure somebody will graph it. Oh, someone will graph it. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm looking for, uh, for, for Zuri math going on here. <laughs> but um, overall, this is really good news. I mean, huge, huge gains. Um, I think a, a whole new type of base will almost be born. You know, gigabases. And that's pretty oh, much... Man. Yeah, and it's going to be so much more interesting. Like, I've never gone the mega base route just because I've, after you hit robots, it's so boring. You don't have to think about routing stuff anymore. <laughs> this will make it so you still have to do all that belt puzzle solving. Yeah, exactly. It'll, it'll be pretty, pretty awesome. Some pretty interesting stuff going on, I think. In the last piece, if we can move on to the next piece here, the map download struggle. Mm-hmm. They state again that they're having issues with the packet losses from ISPs around the world. And they seem to have found some way around it with some help of the community. Yeah. So this is where, this is a good example of like the community kind of throwing their own two cents into it and really helping out the devs. And devs have more time in actual development rather than trying to figure out testing like this. Yeah, that's true. It, it looks like community helped out quite a bit with this, and they released a hotfix. Um, so we're now on 0 0.14.22, I believe. They just released today, which uh, is a hotfix for the internet thing, which they hope should fix it, and then also a fix for uh, graphical issues caused by NVIDIA drivers. Yeah, I actually experienced that myself. That was fun. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> I had, I, had to, I had to revert back to an older driver so that it would work. <laughs> That's unfortunate. I'm glad they got a fix out for that. Yeah. <laughs> it would completely crash the game. It was like, really, guys? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but really, that's it. And they're also looking for a Mac OS developer. If you happen to be one or know someone, uh, check it out. There's a link for the new job thing. Huh? They're still looking for a Mac OS developer. Still, yeah. yeah. Yep. Still, I mean, I don't blame him. Who wants to develop for a Mac? <laughs> anyway. Oh, shots fired. Shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for the comments. <laughs> Wait for the comments section. Oh, man. Well, I, I think that pretty much does it. I mean, we don't want to draw it out too far. Yeah, that pretty much covers it. everything. Yeah. That's good. We're good. Awesome. Well, thanks, guys, for watching. We'd love to hear your comments down in the comments. And until next time, we will catch you later. Remember, put your comments down in the comments. Yeah, dude. It's the good place for comments. It's the perfect place for comments. <laughs> All right, this is a Cry and Shame signing out. <laughs> Bye, everybody.